I'm wondering, do you guys do you guys keep uh, meeting notes, or should I start a uh, document? I'm recording it, so um, we'll have it. But we can start a document if you prefer that as well. Yeah, I just I just created one, so let me let me just do this. Um, let's do this here. Uh, Let's give it a name first. Um, okay. All right. So here's the link for everyone. And it would be great if you could add your um, just your your name and what you'd like to get out of this meeting. And maybe we can do it. Um, uh, we, we can do, just go around the room. And if, uh, so we can all take notes. Uh, this is the way I learn a lot. So I'm, I'm sort of uh, assuming that um, uh, you're similar. And if you're not, please just disregard the notes. Um, and what I'm what I'm hoping to get out of this, so I'll just add my own name here. Um, what I'm hoping to get out of this meeting, which is about um, uh, how Globy interacts with the uh, wonderful Arcos data, and um, um, uh, and basically show some of the work that I've done in the uh, in the past years, and try to learn from you how you would basically search for uh, uh, specifically interactions like um, uh, pairs of host interactions or uh, predator prey interactions or any kind of basically relationship between um, between two. Um, to um, specimen or to uh, to occurrences or basically um, finding claims of things that interact with each other. So, so my question is really, um, and maybe we can add a little list here for the questions. Now I'll actually share my screen to meeting notes so that we can all see them. So my big question is, how can I help make interactions for reported associations in Arctos easier to find, access, and cite? So that's my question, and I'd like to now sort of hand it off to. Oh, am I? Yeah, and I'd like to um, hand it over to maybe Emily. What would you like to get out of this webinar? Sure. So um, I'm Emily Breaker. I'm at the University of Colorado Museum, and. Um, I am, well, I'm curious really just to get a primer on Globy since I haven't really used it that much. And we have um, a relatively new parasite collection. Historically, we've kind of used um, parts to note if we found ectoparasites when preparing specimens, but we finally kind of have a critical mass where we've actually created a parasite uh, collection in Arctos. Um, and so just kind of trying to migrate everything out of those parts and, and into their own catalog record. And then, of mm -hmm. course, we do have, I manage vertebrate collections, so we definitely have some, um, you know, parent offspring relationships and uh, predator prey, things like that, mostly encountered when we're preparing specimens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So other collections at uh, DMNS, it should be science, right? I'm at um I'm at actually University of Colorado Museum, so UCM. Oh, oh 
Oh, I, you, I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. I the question I asked you about on GitHub is about DMNS. <laughs> okay, okay. That's okay, why. <laughs> sorry, I got my I got my wires crossed there. We so we're both in Colorado, can, so <laughs> come yeah, in. Maybe um, maybe you can uh, update this uh, in, uh, information here because I yeah. I'm having having a hard time keeping track. Oh, that's, that's right. Um, what I'm hearing from you is you have you have a uh, a new parasite collection, and also existing uh, collections that have parent child right parent yep. child relations like offspring yep and uh, predator prey yep right and which collections um, are they like what what are the collection codes you you probably know these by heart right yeah, so they're, uh, well, UCM para is the newest, and then we have uh, UCM birds, mammals, herp, what? Yeah. UCM what? herp, UCM mam, okay. I can update mm -hmm. this. Yeah, please. And yeah. bird. Herp. And these are, like, I've learned that these are sort of like um, airport codes, right? Like what codes? Like airport codes. Yeah, like, exactly. Um, you know, like, um, uh, MSP or uh, SFO, and then so the um, the the parent child relations and the predator prey are they in both or is it just one? But yeah, it'll be across collections, and I can mm -hmm. update these as well. Okay, cool. So just to summarize, what I heard you say is uh, you'd like to learn a little bit more about Globy, and then. Also, uh, your you have some collections with um, associations in it, and and what's the question there? Would you what uh, was your intent just to share with the group that you have these collections, or is there anything in specific that you're that you're looking for as far as um, uh, associations go? Um, no, at this point, we're just trying to kind of make these connections. Um, public and and trying to just get the information out there okay so the so the question is how does our efforts look from look uh look like from from outside of our collection and i'm sort of trying to phrase it into a question here or are you more interested in um keeping track of progress or no? Yeah, I think, I mean, for me, I really don't have that much familiarity with Globy. So just sort of curious. Um, yeah, I just seeing what, yeah, what things look like on the Globy end and um, just mm -hmm. making sure our, our things are discoverable. Okay, excellent, thank you. Sorry for prodding. I'm just trying to oh, figure okay. out what, uh, what you're uh, interested in. Um, let's see. Who so wants to go if next? it's okay, I would just jump in because my collections are very similar to Emily's and my questions are similar to Emily's. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm Angela Hornsby. I'm at the University of Montana Zoological Museum. Um, so we also have parasite catalog and uh, bird and mammal catalogs. And I'm also interested in the same types of things. Um, and I guess I, I, also don't have any experience with Globy. And so mm -hmm. I guess my questions are um, whether we need to do anything from the Arctos end to make that data easier to transfer to Globy. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if there are like link outs from Arctos to Globy yet, or if that's something that would be in the works. Right. Are there? Link outs to Lodi from Arctos, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Teresa, you want to go next? Sure. Um, I mean, I think I'm mostly here just to, you know, maybe facilitate from the Arctos end, help answer mm -hmm. questions if there's any about that. Um, but also, um, I do think it's important for us to, you know, make sure that whatever we're publishing 
is going to make it to you uh, efficiently. And I think we kind of have a system for that, but I, I wanted to see if there's anything new, like maybe uh, new relationships get added in Globy that we don't know about. And I know mm -hmm. it requires a little translation because the way you set them up is sometimes worded in different ways than we do. So um, I'm mostly here just to listen in and see if there's anything else we need to be doing. Okay, great. So, um, so, so you're here to, to answer very or not technical, well, technical Arctos questions if they come up, like where, yeah, technical where do you find stuff? Yeah. yeah. And, and then also, <laughs> um, you're interested in making sure that uh, Arctos is exporting or exposing data, um, exposing association data, right? So that's uh, Globy can interpret them. Find, yeah. find mm -hmm. interpret, right? Find yep. interpret the the associated the, the claims about associated um, records, records yep. or organisms or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see, is it the four of us or are there more folks? Mariel? Um, well, I can go. There's a few more people. I don't know if you can pull your screen over. There's a, a couple other people, but I just want to say that in um, just a background history, um, it, we in Arctos in 2011, um, we started bringing in our, a parasite collection uh, at MSB into Arctos and developing the model for that. And at that time, there was, to my knowledge, no online parasite collection anywhere, no database. So we were having to sort of do this from scratch, basically try to work in a bit of a void. And um, I am really excited that now there's lots of people out there interested and who can contribute and like kind of help develop this model further. Because for it seemed like a very long time, we were just like talking out there to nobody. And now there's people who can talk back and it's very exciting. And, you know, I think you are, you're in sort of the same situation for a long time too. You were kind of saying, hey, wouldn't this be really cool? And waiting to find mm -hmm. someone who would answer back. And so now we're actually able to talk back and forth to each other and that's really neat. So, and having lots more voices and more input. So um, one of my um, questions is similar to Teresa's, Emily's and you know, Angela's is just like, we wanna make sure we're speaking the same language that we're able to provide the information back and forth to each other. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of tools that we've developed in Arcos to, and I think no one even knows about half of, I mean, most of the people even in Arctos don't even know about them um, mm -hmm. because uh, they were developed and both for a lot of collections even had parasite or, um, divisions or samples to work with. And uh, um, as the Arctos interface has, is very complex and there's not a lot of, you know, we, you need to be able to show people what, what tools exist. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's the case for you too. And so, uh, you know, I'm sure you have all kinds sorts of wonderful bells and whistles that you want people to know about. And so we need to be able to share those and make sure everybody knows where they are. So that's one of my big concerns is to make sure that we, um, that we expose all of our tools to make these data discoverable and that we make them as maximally discoverable as possible. One of the things that we didn't have when we were developing um, our tools is I'm, I'm a parasitologist, but I'm not a data manager or I mean, I'm a data manager now. When I was, I was learning to be a data manager at the time, I came in as a parasitologist and mm -hmm. I certainly am not a programmer and I don't have any of the programming or data skills that I should have given my position. And it was hard for me talking to the programmers and, talk, and talking to the data people to express what I needed from the parasitology side to be able to say, hey, we need to make these links between hosts and parasites. How do mm -hmm. we do that from a database perspective? So it's really neat to have sort of your perspective from the data background coming in and say, this is what's possible. This is how we do this from a data base perspective. So that's kind of um, what I would really get like to get that perspective and also the perspective of other collections that are coming in with different types of data. And um, I'd like to make sure that all of our tools are discoverable and um, that we're meeting everyone's needs. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you for... Uh... Mm -hmm. For providing this background, it's been it's been a lot of fun working with your parasite collection because I sort of use it as a as a testing ground to sort of try out all the 
for the linking that I'm, I'll hopefully uh, show later. Um, and then the other things I picked up was things like uh, how do we how do we make sure we speak the same language right across uh, platforms in this case uh, Arcos and Globi and what kind of tools can we what kind of existing tools can we uh, use for that and then um, how do we how do we better express our respective desires is that one way to put it yeah I guess also what's possible. Because I know that you and I have had personal conversations. Teresa has been involved with this. Sometimes you'll say things and I'll like nod my head and have no idea what you're saying because you're talking <laughs> to me from a data perspective that right. I don't know the tools. And probably I'm doing the same thing back at you from the sort of parasitological perspective. And so uh -huh. I just want to make sure that we're all communicating. I know that when I was working just, just with when we were creating the first, the, the online um, portal, it was mm -hmm. a year of going back and forth with programmers before we felt like we were actually understanding what the other was saying. And I'm sure that's still going on and that's an ongoing process. And so you might have a really cool idea of something that's possible and you might say it to us and then you wonder why people aren't jumping up and down going, oh, that's so cool. And it may not be because it's not cool. It just maybe we have no idea, A, what you're what you actually mean by that or what's possible. And so mm -hmm. we just, you know, furthering these discussions and so that we can go, oh yeah, that is really cool. Let's do that. And then how do we support you in that to make that go forward and vice versa? Are there things we can do that would, that would help, on, you know, you achieve your goals on your end. So yeah. more communication. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's right. So it's not just uh, exchanging data, but it's also sort of exchanging desires, right? Like how, how do we, and um, saying it in such a way that we, we can sort of understand each other, kind of. Sort of goals and possibilities. I mean, possibilities okay. really, and making sure we understand the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is currently possible and what are our, what are our shared goals? Mm -hmm. Something like that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and anybody, anybody else wants to? Um, share some questions. I saw uh, Andy. I saw Gen Genevieve. Tom. Yeah, I don't really have much else to add. Um, kind of the same questions. Just generally want to know what you're up to, Yort, and if there's any new any new features or any new capabilities of Globy um, that you've been working on or that might come in handy? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what has your been up to? Hey, uh, <clears throat> everyone, how's it going? I, uh, curious also, I mean, most of the things have already been said, but also curious if there's any way um, so I work, uh, those of you who don't know me, I work with amphibians um, and reptiles at MSB. And, uh, you know, I'm intrigued by the ability to look for things, you know, especially what ate what, you know, that kind of thing. Um, because we, in, in the herpetological field, um, there's a journal, um, Herpetological Review, that... Um, actually does a really good job at keeping track of these things, but, um, you know, specimens get cited, but that's about it. You know, it's in print. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, maybe just learning how Globy is, you know, good interface with some of maybe scraping literature as well, that kind of thing, you know. Uh, so which, which uh, journal is this? Uh, it's called the Herpetological Review. Um, and, uh, you know, so there's, there's, uh, kind of, a lengthy sections on natural history notes, um, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, about, you know, a lot of things are about behavior. Um, but then there's quite a bit about interactions and, and, uh, especially, you know, parasites and diet. Right. right. So, um, you know, yeah. So to learn what the possibilities are. Yeah. But okay. Mm -hmm. Cheers. On that same subject, quickly, you are uh, one of the big issues for us, and also I know for Tom and uh, too, is pathogens. 
And that would be huge because we don't have pathogen vouchers. And so you could be a, a really important bridge to help us between the museum of voucher specimens and the literature in terms of being able to link mm. the pathogens. And you've already done that with GenBank some, so the more we can explore that. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, let's see. So there's, I think there's one more person. And if you don't want to talk, just, just say, uh, I don't want to talk. I guess that's kind of hard to say if you don't want to talk, but yeah. Yeah, you're right. It was actually Genevieve and um, she works with Andy and basically is interested in the same things he is. Okay, great. Um, okay, excellent. So I think we, uh, we had everybody um, talk, right? Uh, if I, okay, so we can, we have uh, about a half an hour left. So what I can do is I can give you sort of a whirlwind uh, tour of what I do to maintain um, associations uh, for MS, like with a specific focus on MSB and how I communicate and what kind of discussions come up. Because um, I, so it's, it's going to be sort of a very narrow slice of what's the, the kind of the work I do. Also with uh, very recent examples, because we, we had some recent discussions that I think are, are very um, uh, informative for people that might not know what's going on in the background to keep this, um, keep this working. And then hopefully, um, uh, uh, if there's some time left, I can also talk a little bit about the uh, literature extraction because because a lot of like, a lot of other projects are sort of working on that, and a lot of research is done based on literature uh, extraction. So if we have some time, I can I can go over, for instance, this. Um, so I'll just make a little section here notes. Um, uh, or maybe we can say a little agenda, right? So that would be uh, articulate questions. And then uh, the other thing is to um, overview uh, in introduction to Globy. And then if there's time, um, I can maybe go over some of the literature extraction, extraction uh, projects, projects like, um, for instance, this one. So if we don't get to it, at least you can uh, have a look. Uh, COVID-19. So that's actually about pathogens, right? Um, I hope this link works. Um, yeah. If it doesn't, just call her. Is, is there, um, so this is with focus on MSP Terra. And then at the end, I'm hoping to make a little shopping list of uh, what, you know, where to go next. Because that's, one of the things that I, I'd like to learn from you is like what's totally missing, what doesn't make sense, like what, what is completely uh, useless or useful. So things like that, because, you know, we, we all have limited time and um, uh, same for me, like I can only spend X amount of time on programming new features. I, I also have to maintain old features, right? So the, the fewer features I have to maintain, the better, really. So if you see anything that's that you don't understand why it's there, then I'd, I'd love to drop it right altogether. So um, anything else we uh, we can we should discuss? No, that's good. Okay, yeah, All right. So if somebody else can take notes, that the Excellent, because it's kind of hard to do uh, to sort of present and take notes at the same time. And um, I'll be 
I'll be using existing resources. So there's no slide deck or anything because uh, I figured that, you know, um, why, why not use what's there? Um, so just to start with the landing page of Globy, this is what it looks like. Uh, I, the, over time, we sort of tried to make it as simple as possible. And this hasn't really changed that much. So you can do some very um, simple queries or seemingly uh, simple queries. So this is sort of a canned query that you can just click on and it populates the thing here. So this is sort of formed in a sentence, right? With little blanks in it saying, what kind of blah do APs formate, right? So, so now you get this list, this short list of things that um, uh, Globy has indexed and it basically says, uh, it sort of consists of uh, things that support a certain interaction claim. So in this case, honeybee interacting or uh, pollinating some, some peach or something. I don't know what that is, but, um, and here's the, the, the citation of the, 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 basically the authority will make that claim. And the, and the provider is the source of the data. So this is where the, the, the bits and bytes come from that basically contain that claim. And this is the publication or the, yeah, the, the people that sort of have set to make that claim, right? So there's, there's really two parts to it. One is the sort of the authority and then the other part is the data set that it came from, right? So you can have uh, one publication be cited to make a certain claim across different data sets, which gets very interesting, right? Um, so there are ve two very different things. So there's provenance for the who made the claim and the provenance for the origin of where did this, where did the bits and the bytes stand from? So that's the difference between this first part and the second part. And they both have citations. Right. Um, so you can also, you know, look around for um, see others, and you can just enter your own here. So if, if you're interested in, um, in, I think these are, yeah, chipmunks. You can see what they eat, but you can also see everything they do. So. This is sort of a catch-all in, um, uh, interaction. So it's really high, hierarchical, and then it also grabs the, the more specific interaction. So in this case, you're asking, I'm asking for all the interactions of, of the chipmunk, right? And here you see some uh, summarized claim. And in this case, it looks like um, actually a literature study that was made by, uh this project here the sucking lies of the world the taxonomic checklist that was enriched with the um uh mammalian hosts and um geographic um uh, um distribution so very similar to what what uh what was referenced earlier right so sort of a literature uh review in a way and there's a Arctos specimen that makes that claim, right? So that's a nice segue into um, into the integration um, from yeah between Arctos and Globy. So this one is very very high level in a way. You're so basically it's saying, well, just go look at this paper, right? And this one is very specific. It says, hey, this is the this is a citation. Go have a look at this. Right, um, and hopefully I can I can share this link with you. I can actually share the link with this one in the chat, and if somebody could, uh, or I could actually drop it into the um, meeting notes. It's a little easier, just so that you can sort of follow along. Um, so this is the theory here and then uh, this fix and then actually 
because this is dynamic, right? This might change uh, over time. What I usually do is just take a screenshot and include it here. Uh, screenshot here. And then, because uh, Arcos might go away, right? Or, well, Maybe not in the next 50 years, but you know, maybe in the next 200 years, Arcos might not exist anymore. Um, and here's the, oh, sorry. Here's the link to the, to the. So as you can see, it jumps right into the uh, Arcos uh, pages and so, and the neat thing, so there was a question about does Arcos link to uh, Globy? So the answer is yes. Um, and this is a interactive thing. So every time you sort of look at this page, if you reload it and Globy is down or Globy doesn't exist anymore, this thing is gonna go away. Same with GBIF and IDIC bio. So it's almost like, um, like every time you load this page, there's in the background, there's a little program that checks with GBIC and IDIC Bio and uh, Globy what they know about this record, right? So it's an, it's an interactive query that populates this list. Um, so now you can see, um, you know, that there's, a, there's an associated mammal here and uh, you, you can go back to the back to see what uh, Globy sees, and here you can see the in, in this very quirky UI here. You can see that you can populate the uh, according to field, and if you do that, it's only going to show claims and related other um, uh, sources that make that claim. That's that's. Um, that are of interest here. Yeah, so. We have a, a quick question that I mm -hmm. want to make sure um, is clarified in the mm -hmm. chat. And that is if you need, to, if the interactions that Globy, Globy publishes require a published authority, or can they just be raw specimen data? And since you're harvesting from Arctos, from the Arctos mm -hmm. perspective, if we create a relationship such as a parasite host relationship in Arctos mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. using the other identifier field and you say, okay, this is a parasite of, that will automatically be pulled in by uh, Globy and yeah. create that yeah. link there. So as you, so as a collection manager in Arctos, if you upload a record with these linkages, then Globy can harvest it. Yes, to, if, if all works out, yeah. So, um, so that that should be said because um, this is sort of like an on, this is a living system, right? So things get updated all, all the time. Data gets updated, software gets uh, updated, and we're just trying to keep the links alive. So it's a very active project, right? And maybe uh, later um, we can sort of go over one of the recent th threads that sort of shows how how changes propagate and sort of make it seem weird, right? Um, for instance, we, someone saw that the, this link dropped out for MSV para. This was like last week, right? Um, so that's something I wanna stress. It's an, it's an active thing and I'm trying real hard to make it uh, stable enough so you can use it, but it's like, um, yeah, it's like herding cats a little bit, right? Do you have an archive or is there a, a backup of this so that if, uh, so you have a time series with an ar the archive yeah. data somewhere? Yeah, so I keep, I keep archives um, uh, and um, every week or so, I basically take a new snapshot. So I, I do keep those uh, archives around, but for instance, what happens um, last week is that um, there was some maintenance on the, on the uh, on the uh, system that made the 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 MSB para archive sort of go empty. So I indexed an in empty archive, 
And of course, all the links were gone, right? Because uh, if the data is gone, then you know, if you explicitly say, hey, this is our collection now, then it's going to be gone, right? So I was able to revert to an older version um, and sort of reinstate it temporarily before sort of moving on to a, a version that was um, um, uh, okay. But um, I hope I can sort of, um, hope you can sort of understand that it's a very active process. And maybe this is a good time to sort of go over the, um, what happens in the background. So this is sort of, um, this is sort of zooming out to, to the, like how the bits and the pieces work, right? Because obviously um, there's something that happens that makes this link show up, right? That makes this link show up. And there's actually a lot happening in the background to make that happen. So um, this is Globy's basically uh, integration workflow, simplified uh, version of it. This basically says, uh, this shows the tracking of the versions. So all the data sets that come into Globy gets get versions, right, as is. So I, I have actually a pretty big collection now of Arctos uh, versions of things. So if you ever want to do a study of how things change over time, then um, you can do that. Um, and uh, after the versioning, um, there's basically roughly sort of two interpretations that happen. One is the names, right? So you want to link up the names to the all sorts of authorities to enable searching. Um, uh, the searches that we did, Tamias, for instance, right? You want to be able to uh, do the searches on the higher level uh, uh, taxonomy. And then the other part is the interpretations of the um, interactions. So there's always slight variations. Like for instance, um, uh, Arcto says parasite off. Um, and, uh, you know, this is interpreted as, um, as parasites, right? So it's similar, but not quite the same. So there's like little translations that uh, need to happen. So that happens here. So that's going from verbatim interaction types to the the, 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 the interpreted ones, and then the names get integrated, and then you get to have this, what I call an in interpreted interaction data set, right? And if you zoom into Arctos, then, so that's the process here. Um, if you zoom into Arctos, there's even just, just for Arctos, one of the many uh, data sources that uh, Globy uh, uh, integrates with, there's a lot going on also. So if you look at um, the what I call the integration profile that we've created as part of this uh, project called the Parasite Tracker, um, it sort of looks like this, where um, Um, where a collection manager uses the Arctos website, right? And then in the background, the Arctos collection management systems, they publish their Darmaco archives to VertNet. So that's where I get my Arctos data from VertNet. And then, so there's a slight delay here also, because they don't get updated right away. I don't know exactly what, um, what the, uh, update uh, uh, frequency is, but it's probably every week or every day, or do, do you guys know, uh, Teresa? Uh, it's, I, we get a monthly update to VertNet. Okay, monthly, okay, I see. So there's, yeah, so there's a delay there, right? Um, and that's, um something to take into account so it's super annoying like that you change that you change something here right and then you have to wait wait a while to see the changes propagate it makes total sense because they're separate projects 
uh, but you know it's something to know to uh, keep in mind right as you're... it's frustrating for us too because our data are online live with immediate well actually publicly within 24 hours yes so you yeah. you can see it but the, and see the change but it's not going to the aggregators for at the moment right right so this this is also what uh, what happens in uh, GBIF. So you can you can basically I'm sort of leveraging off of the the way that GBIF and IDIC Bio and these other folks integrate with uh, Arctos. Yeah. So there's um, and then from that, I sort of take the data sets and then try and do my best to link to to generate these links and, and, and interpret these links. And if you look at the um, look at what's happening happening here, it's actually not that straightforward because you have you have the, for instance, the um, oh, you have one collection, for instance, MSP para on the one side with one Darwin core archive, right? And then you have another one called MSP host or uh, some other data set or mammal, right? In, in another Darwin core archive. And then I have to figure out where they are, right? And then I also have to uh, figure out how to, how to um, uh, integrate them, right? So there's some magic here. And then you all of a sudden have an integrated MSB para MSB man, right? So if you if you look at how I do it, it's like it seems super convoluted and weird. Because if you look at um, if you look at the way I uh, I configure the indexing specifically for MSB para. And you can look that up by going to the sources page. I sort of realized there's a lot of information here. Um, and look for MSB para. Here. So here's a little sort of entry of what's, what's known about this uh, data set. Um, and you can look at the uh, the configuration here. Um, sorry. You can look at the uh, the con configuration here, and uh, this is going to look kind of complicated. But what I want you to take away from here is that I have to specify uh, exactly the where this file comes from. So in this case, we have this file here, right? That's where you download it. That's where you can access it. That's where GDIF gets it. And then you have, for instance, the MSB host collection or the MSB mammal collection that is published somewhere else. And then it's basically up to me to integrate those two. And that's that took me a while to figure that out. Right? So you're, I have a question for you, because mm -hmm. all of this in Arctos directly in Arctos, without going through all the aggregator hand waving, is integrated. Can you yeah. get these data directly from our API? I mean, because you could come to Arctos without going to all this outside sources and just harvest directly, and because yeah. the integration is there already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's I can. I can see um, I can see your point, and so so the question is why not integrate uh, why not integrate directly, right? Well, but we're already integrated because in Arctos, it already the host and parasite already points at each other through the relationships in Arctos. We already have that link, so you yeah. you're making a link, but we already made it, and so you're going to all this extra trouble to remake the link that already exists through Arctos, and so the question is, could you just harvest that? directly from the API. I could, and then um, I would have to do a lot of crawling. I would have to do a lot of crawling. I would have to implement 
additional ARCO specific features to, um, to make use of your integrated data set. And I might still have to do this because there are some data sets that you integrate with that are not hosted on Arctos, for instance, NCBI, or um, uh, if you look at this list here, there's actually a, a quite a big list of uh, collections that are actually managed outside of Arctos. So for instance, I think the Field Museum is also part of it here, MVZ. Um, MVZ is in Arctos, but yeah, oh, so sorry. MCZ, MCZ, sorry. Yeah, so this one is actually well, in Arctos, but, but, but wait, not wait. in the same. A different the instance. Same <laughs> and, yeah, and I think, here's, um, here's the one, Smithsonian, right? I think one thing for us to think about, especially with the new um, GBIF model, when it gets up and running, is a proper placement in a Darwin core field so that it's easier for you to find these things. So and I don't know if there's a field now that would work well. Well, th like this stuff may sound uh, very complicated, but it's actually not. The only thing that's complicated for me, because you, you, you're recording all the interactions in those Darwin Core archives in a very nice way. Um, and all I have to do, or all I have to do is basically make sure to uh, pull in information from the mammals, right? And then associate it with the the really nice reference you make here with the associated uh, parasite records. And I'm able to do that. That's not a big deal. So, so uh, waiting for the new GBIF model, which is just a paper exercise at this point and sort of a vision, I think would be, you know, would be nice, but then we will have to wait for five or 10 years and then someone's gonna come up with a model that might or might not work, right? So. Uh, I, I have uh, positive feelings that the new model is gonna happen within 18 months. Yeah. Um, He's for Arctos. I don't know about everybody yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I've been involved in discussions and uh, that'd be great. Yeah, if that happens. Um, I'm, I'm more of a use, what, uh, whatever is available kind of guy, right? So you're so on another, the, oh, go ahead. Um, I just said, I just wanted to follow up on the other half of that question in the chat, which is, mm -hmm. so you're, you're pulling in all the relationships that are formalized in Arctos, uh, host of mm -hmm. parasite of, but are mm -hmm. you, do you have scripts that are just crawling and looking for keywords like ectoparasite? So for instance, for those records, where we might just have a part that says ectoparasite and we haven't actually cataloged those separately yet. Um, is that information being found or that's just kind of dark data? No, it's um, if, if it's exported into the Dharma Core archive, um, there are various, uh, various little pieces of uh, scripts that look, look in specific places. So it's not just where, not just the associated occurrences that um, a lot of uh, records have, but also dynamic properties or uh, uh, remarks or the, um, the more sort of modern um, um, uh, relationship, uh, research relationship um, extension. Uh, so uh, if I would have to have an ask for you is that if you know that there's remarks in there in your collection that uh, that are being exported or that are in your records, sort of the first question that I would have is what, like, which records are they? And let's have a look. Let's have a look uh, whether I can see any of it because I can just basically search through all the archives and sort of try to find the record. And then if there are, if there is a, um, if there is, text that is easy to parse and uh, integrate, then yes, let's do it. So that, that's actually how I integrate with uh, the Smithsonian. They have, uh, they have sort of their own, they figured out their own way to um, squash it into the, you know, the, uh, the big tables and it works fine. 
Um, they're very ap apologetic about it, but it works great. Gotcha, yeah. thanks. And we have about five minutes left just to give everyone a lens ahead of, uh, head up. So if you have questions that we want to address. Yeah, so uh, maybe, maybe I can sort of uh, wrap up with saying, um, basically inviting you to, uh, to look around and see which, which of your collections, collection records should be known by Globy. And if the, that link is not there, then there's an opportunity to make it, make it more visible, right? Because if we enable that, then um, we, can, we can do all sorts of fun stuff. We can, we can do searches across Arctos and for instance, the Smithsonian or other collections that uh, you might not know about. And we can start to get to flex our muscles as far as integrating with, for instance, with GenBank. So I have some integration codes with that resolves information for a reference to GenBank. And uh, then you might be able to leverage Globy to look for your own records um, and then see um, what the uh, related GenBank uh, information is, stuff like that. But obviously, you know, one hour is not gonna be enough to, um, to talk about these very specific cases, but I would, I would very much like to invite you to either um, send me an email with specific examples. So that's, that's really important to me to, to have very specific examples or, and either do it um, yeah, by, by email or by uh, opening an issue. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you one, oh, sorry. I'll show you one, um, so please share examples of uh, records with associations. Associations here or via email, right? Uh, I, or via email. Uh, so you can email them here. And um, just to give you an, an idea of how long these uh, conversations can get, uh, I'd like to sort of close with this thread here that just happened last week uh, where Dusty starts saying, hey, why are these links broken, right? And then Mariel saying, hey, this is probably a globy thing. Is it our problem, your problem? So of course, Teresa says it's my problem, right? And then she lets me know. And then I was very grateful for that. And then I jumped in and said, hey, yeah, there's something weird going on. And then it turned out that I just happened to get like a, a wrong. So I went into great details like, hey, the, uh, the data is empty. See, this was like completely uh, empty here. And then Dusty was joking that they were experimenting with zero byte compression, which is basically uh, em emptying out all the archives. Um, uh, but you know that was just a blip, and now it's back to normal. So you can see how many people it takes, how many how many effort it takes to keep these links and these integrations alive. And there's a lot you can automate. There's a lot of things you can do to uh, automatically re make reviews. So that's that's another thing I I'll, I'll share in the in the in the meeting notes. Um, so each integration point has a has a review link here, and there you can see a, a very sort of '90s rendering of uh, of what Globy sort of understands from this data. Um,
yeah, I'd like to sort of leave it at that. Great. Yeah, and we can, um, we'll make sure to share this document too with the working group, maybe in one of our next agendas so people can contribute uh, examples, especially. I think that would be useful. Yeah. So again, like, yeah, thanks for listening. And also, um, if you like, if you see uh, associations in Arctos that do not have a link to Globi, just assume there's something wrong or that we don't know about it, right? And please communicate because that's really how these links uh, become alive and that's how they get maintained. This, this issue that was uh, there um, that came up last week was after many, many years of uh, okay uh, integration. It, it just happens and it really takes the human observers to, to curate these links, right? So it's a lot of work. So thanks for uh, providing all that wonderful data and hopefully I can do my best to, um, yeah, uh, provide as many, many sort of um, views on it as you, so that folks can actually see your um, hard work um, in different places. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jort. And thanks everyone for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.